Hey, this is Ryan from Dakota Angler and Outfitter, and today we're going to be tying a simple pike tube pattern. We're using the, a large size tubing and 240 denier black Vivas power thread. Start your thread just a little ways ahead of the back of the tube. You want to leave yourself a little space at the back. Turn off your excess. Bring your thread forward just a bit. And then we're going to be using <clears throat> bucktail for the back portion of this and we're going to reverse tie it just to kind of give the illusion of bulk without having a lot of materials. And I've already cut a clump, but the biggest thing is that you take your your fibers out of the bottom part of the bucktail here. These are a lot more hollow than if you take them out of the tip. These are a lot more dense and they don't flare very well. So we'll take a piece of bucktail that I've combed the short fibers out of and kind of any fur that might be in there. And we're going to reverse tie it, which means tie it in facing the wrong way. And I kind of spread this out in my fingers because I want it to go all the way around the hook. Like this. And then you can kind of, what I do a lot of times is I'll just put about two wraps, loose wraps around it. And then I'll just spread everything else around with my fingers so it's evenly dispersed around the hook. And then I'll take and put a little thread pressure on it. And a little more. It'll kind of slowly flare out. And you can take and trim off however much of this excess you want. It's going to kind of be hidden anyway so it doesn't have to look super pretty alright now we're going to take and push this back with our fingers so we kind of make sure it's evenly spread around the hook for the most part and then if you have to move anything you can as long as you didn't really cinch down on it you can kind of scoot everything around and give it a good pull and push everything else back. So this is going to kind of just be the prop for our main tail. So then you can kind of sneak your thread in front of it here. And then just kind of build. You're going to build a little kind of a, a tapered dam in front of this. This is going to kind of prop that back. I'm just checking every once in a while to see how what the angle is. A 45 degree angle is about perfect, so we're just about there. Yeah, about like that. So this is just going to be the prop pretty much underneath of our, our big fly fiber that we're going to use for a tail. And this is the kind with a curl, which is important. If you use the straight kind, it's not going to give you as much of a as much of a body as this while the curl kind of gives you the bulk the combination of the curl and the bucktail so you'll take your big fly fiber with the curl here and you can see I'm not using a lot of it the <clears throat> just the how this is propped up and the bulk that the curl is going to give us we, we don't need a lot of materials which is important because it makes the flies a lot easier to cast and a lot easier to fish so kind of same thing Spread this around the hook pretty evenly. These flies end up being kind of symmetrical when you're done. Do a couple loose wraps. Make sure everything's spread around. You can just go around and move stuff as needed. And once you got it where you want it, cinch down and tie back a little ways. This stuff is pretty long when you first use it, but you can trim the, the end of it if you want to when you're when you're done. So trim off your excess at the front. Looks like I might need just a little more. Oh, just gonna spread it out a little better evenly around the fly. Sometimes when you tie it in on the top of the vise, everything kind of gets caught <clears throat> at the top side. You have to take and push everything all the way around. Alright, so now what we're going to do, kind of make sure everything's 
back and out of the way. We're going to take some Magnum Flashaboo. We're using an, kind of a dark olive color here. And use a lot of it. <clears throat> the flash is good, and you can see that in a lot of European fly tying videos. A lot of those guys use a lot, a lot of flash in their pike flies, and it, it really seems like pike do like flashy flies. So one trick that I've learned is, so when you cut your flash, it's even like this. Take and kind of spread it out in your fingers, and pull them all to different lengths still pinching it in the same spot and just letting it kind of slide through your fingers. This gives you a lot more lifelike looking fly when you're done rather than having just a chopped off piece of flash at the end it gives it a little more of a realistic <coughs> shape. So what we're going to do is so we'll <coughs> excuse me we'll tie about two-thirds of this total piece in going back to begin with and then we'll fold the rest of it back so same thing, you kind of just widen it out, put it on the fly, and then you can spread it around the hook. And I do that loose wrap just to kind of hold it. Maybe do two just to be sure nothing comes out. And then you can go around the hook and kind of evenly spread out everything. It's not super important that it's exact, but you want it to be fairly evenly spread around the hook like so a few here that could be moved alright so then take we've got your flash on there we've got the stuff facing forward still you're gonna take and push all this back just like we did with the bucktail which will <clears throat> keep your keep your fly kinda nice and staggered looking and give you a lot of different lengths of flash which really looks good in the water and make sure that's tied down well. So we've got all of that. And I tie all these flies nice and long to begin with because you can always trim them afterwards if you want. I mean the, the total fly might be 10 or 12 inches long when I first tie it and if the, the fish don't like flies that big on any given day I'll just kind of gradually shorten everything up until I figure out what they like. So now we're going to use some gold lateral scale and we're just going to put about two pieces on each side just to give the fly a little bit of a contrast color I'm going to tie this in long just like everything else on this fly if you tie it in long you can always trim it later so go ahead and tie that in like that. give it two wrap just to be sure and you can trim off your excess Alright, and flip it over and do two more on the other side of the fly. This probably isn't a, a necessary step, but it definitely gives the fly a, a lot better look. A lot more realistic look. It seems like the fish like contrast. It seems like the flies are easier for them to find if they have a little bit of contrast rather than all one kind of color. Right, so we got that tied in. Okay, so we got all that. What I do, do a few good wraps here. And I take one of these little hair clips, kind of get everything headed back the right direction, clip it. So it's going to keep everything out of your way. And then just because everything's kind of been tied in right here, I'll take a little bit of brushable Loctite super glue and just do a little coat on there. Makes these flies a lot more durable. So as that's drying, I'm going to take another piece of olive bucktail, and you can use the same color, you can use a contrasting color, it's kind of up to, up to your personal preference. And we'll do the same thing as we did on the back. We're going to reverse tie this, and then we're going to use a fish mask actually to finish this fly. And make sure, what I kind of do is I grab the bucktail right in the middle. And comb out all of these long or short fibers and also if there's any really long ones I pull those out too. 
if there's any real long ones. They don't have to all be exactly the same length, but just so they're roughly pretty similar. So I cover this up with thread just so it's not quite as sticky. And we're going to reverse tie this also. <clears throat> and in this step, it's really important that you get it really even around the hook. So same thing. Spread it out between your thumb and forefinger. Set it where you want it. And I'm kind of spreading it around the hook. I do a couple loose wraps. And then just go around and make sure it's pretty evenly dispersed. And do about two more wraps and you can flare it. Like so. Now you can go through and I trim these off just so you can't quite see the black thread underneath because this is going to get covered up anyways. So I like them. They kind of prop this bucktail up just a little bit more also. Okay. And this is kind of a tricky part. So you do, once that's flared, do a couple more wraps. And you have to whip finish this, and you could even just do a half hitch, <clears throat> but it's kind of difficult because you can't use a whip finish tool, so you have to learn to whip finish with your fingers, or just do a half hitch is just as easy, and you're, you can glue it, and it, it won't come apart. So go ahead and finish that. And you're using heavy thread on these, so make sure and put some put some thread pressure on it. Don't be don't be afraid to to pull on it, because it's going to make the fly last a lot longer. So I'll take and. A little bit of that same brushable super glue on this. Kind of making sure to keep everything else out of the way. That hair clip's helping me. But so now we're gonna take a fish mask. This is a size eight and a half. You can use a ten if you're tying really big flies, but this eight and a half seems to be kind of a nice in-between size and it's an easy way to finish the fly. I've pre-glued the eyes on these. <clears throat> the The size of the mask designates the size of the eye you'll need. So on an eight and a half you need an eight and a half millimeter eye, a ten, a ten millimeter and so on. And what we'll do here, take and kinda, you can unclip this if you want now. You can take and <coughs> excuse me, push everything else back being sure to keep it nice and Nice and even. What I do here is I'll take and I'll clip this again with that hair clip. If I can find where I put it, right there. And then what I like to do, this probably isn't a necessary step, but I use a gel glue like this Loctite. And I just kind of go around all of the head kind of in the front because the fish mask is actually going to ride on this so I like kind of filling this up with a glue that helps hold it from this side as well I don't know that it's a, a necessary step but it's one more thing that makes your fly that much more durable I think make sure and keep everything else out of there make sure everything's folded back and then you simply take and push the mask on and you can kind of adjust everything as you push it back and it'll squeeze glue out of the front of this so you can take either your fingers or some sort of like a scrap material like a hackle stem and wipe the glue off of it but that Eventually, once that glue dries, this makes your fly incredibly durable just because that head's glued on there like it is. So now, again, I don't know if this is a necessary step, I take and put a little thread in front of the eye and it'll be kind of slippery if there's any glue on there. But this will keep that fish mask from sliding off. Just kind of build up a little thread dam here like so 
you could probably just burn it and you'd be all right too. you could just burn this tube up to that but on these pike flies that take a while to tie I like to be sure I'm making them as, as durable as possible so I'll go ahead and whip finish that so then trim that off and what we're gonna do is use some loon thin fly finish I just go around that thread and kind of build it up onto the head a little bit too and UV all the way around that just to kind of give the fly a clean finished look and also to make that not come apart on you like so take a UV light Harden that up. Like that. Alright, so now that we've got that done, we'll take the fly off the mandrel. And we've got this little snout that's sticking out in front. We'll trim that just a bit. And we'll take, and I like to put it back on the mandrel for this. Take a lighter, and you'll just kind of mushroom that head a little bit. Make sure you just not light it on fire if you can avoid it. Like that. And then I like to take it while it's still hot. Put it back on here a little bit just to make sure that stays open. So, it's a pretty, a pretty <laughs> substantial fly really but you can trim the back a little bit and it's surprising how how big a fly these fish will eat this one's probably 10 inches long overall and even a, a fairly average sized pike could could very easily eat something of this size so definitely tie a few up and you can use various colors I mean the the olive's kind of a good natural color if that's the look you're going for or you can do uh Black and white and chartreuse are probably our three three most consistent, but if they get a little picky, these more natural colors work work pretty well also. So thanks.